So my uh, fitness story is a little different than most. So I have no fitness background, no formal training in fitness. I was a film major in college. I have my degree in film production. I was working at a frozen yogurt shop fresh out of high school back in 2014. Started uh, meeting with this guy. Blonde hair would come into Golden Spoon on Fridays. Always order the exact same thing every single time. It was a large with salted caramel, uh, extra embo sprinkles, and I just remembered them every single time. Welcome to the Fitness CEO Podcast. Hey, welcome back, friends, to another amazing episode of the Fitness CEO Podcast. And I'm here with my two buddies, partners in crime, Jake Stewart, John Gilbo. And we're going to set the scene, set the, set the stage, if I can say that correctly. And uh, Jake Stewart is my head coach at Mission Viejo Fit Body Boot Camp, has been part of our brand since 2016. And uh, John Gilbo, my dear friend, client coordinator at Mission Viejo Fit Body Boot Camp, been with us in 2019. And I hear not only your two dear friends, but... Uh, um, let's see here. Um, Woo. Partners in crime. Partners in crime. That's what I was looking These for. Are, Thanks, John. <laughs> You're welcome. Appreciate that. Um, aside from that, um, they are two of the principal, um, I guess, executors of our trainers, if you will, of our on-site experience, uh, which we run two specific on-site experiences, one in Mission Viejo, California, and then one in Berkeley, Michigan. So we have two teams collide, but really, you're going to see our lead trainers for on-site experience. And I'm going to kind of give a little context here, and then I'm going to open up and get a little backstory about their coaching career. But on-site experience is a program that's uh, offered to to our new franchise partners coming through the pipeline. And um, we had a vision uh, back in the day, uh, we used to bring in all of our franchise partners once a quarter here at headquarters for a classroom style learning. And that's very, very valuable to learn the X's and O's and really the game plan of running a business model. Very, very helpful, just like a college sports team teaching his team the game plan, the X's and O's. But one thing that I realized and our team realized going through this process, um, actually through COVID, would be was the fact that yes, um, it's important to understand the, the X's and O's of the business model, but it's another thing to actually, you know, get boots on the ground experience and be in the trenches, actually learn on site. And, you know, using the analogy of a sports team, one, you need to understand the X's and O's from the coaching perspective. But number two, you only get good and really learn the game through actually practicing on the field. And that was really the eye opener that I had. And I really took to Jake and John saying like, we can still provide all that classroom tra training, but really upload it, install it on our uh, academy, which is really in a learning management system. So that way, all of our new franchise partners coming through the pipeline, they can learn all that content from the comfort of their home, learn the X's and O's, learn the game plan, but then come out to Mission Viejo and really understand what the business looks like from an on-site experience. And that's really what the birth of this happened. And we've been running at the time of this recording, we just executed our 19th on-site experience between both locations. So there's a wealth of knowledge and really this episode is, is about really empowering you and encouraging you to make sure that you uh, train your teams being business owners, but more importantly, to kind of give you a look under the hood, if you will, of really our process here at Fit Body Bootcamp and how we are producing incredible owners, incredible launches. In fact, we have the 100 Live Change Guarantee, which says that we will open your gym with over 100 members from day one at your grand opening, or we'll run your marketing until you do. And the reason that we have such confidence of that is because of the systems, the marketing, the processes, and also to these two guys right here and our process and our program. So without further ado, I want to welcome you guys to the show. John and Jake, excited to have you back. Thank you, sir. Happy to be here as always. Thank and you. I should say welcome back to Jake, and this is the first time for John. Um, but I uh, really want to kind of open it up before we dive into OSC, just get a little backstory. So Jake, uh, I know I teed you up in 2016 you started. How'd you find out about us and go from Yeah, there? totally. So my uh, fitness story is a little different than most. Um, so I have no fitness background, no formal training in fitness. Um, I was a film major in college. I have my degree in film production. Uh, I was working at a frozen yogurt shop fresh out of high school back in 2014. Uh, I started uh, meeting with this guy. Blonde hair would come into Golden Spoon on Fridays. Always order the exact same thing every single time. It was a large with salted caramel, uh, extra embo sprinkles, and I just remembered them every single time. We got to chatting, and then after a couple of years, we just really got to know each other. We actually saw each other working out at a big box gym. Uh, that guy turned out to be Mr. Bryce Henson himself, the Woo! fitness CEO himself. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, and the stars aligned, and he was in need of some coaching help uh, at his facility. And he asked, he's like, hey, have you ever heard of Fit Body Bootcamp before? I said, no, I've never heard of it before. He told me a little little bit about it. I checked him out on Instagram. I went in the next day for a workout and was immediately hooked. So I just love the 30 minute training style. I was used to going to the gym for like three, four, five hours a day. I basically lived at my local 24 hour fitness. It was crazy. I was always just staying in there, like talking with all, with all the people in there and just pretty much wasting my day. And then when I found circuit training, it really just like clicked and I just fell in love with it. So I took up um, coaching part time and was still working at the frozen yogurt shop and then eventually decided like, Hey, you know what? Maybe fitness is where I'm being called to be. Um, and then quit my frozen yogurt job, uh, took on fitness full-time became a full-time coach and eventually over the uh, seven years that i've been here now holy smokes it's been seven years 
years. Uh, I've worked my way up to head coach, and now I train the on-site experience for our new franchise partners. So I get to train people that are coming into the brand that are brand new, um, all the things that I've learned uh, over the years. So it's been a weird and wild ride, but I wouldn't trade it for the world, and I'm just excited to be here. Heck yeah, buddy. You are a brother of mine, and I think that's a big takeaway for an audience. Like, You need to be able to train, develop, nurture your team because your team is your product, and there's no secret. Jake's been a massive, massive part of not our success at HQ, but also to our Mission Vejo location. So Jake, appreciate you, buddy. Of course. And I want to flip it over to my man, John Gilbo, and I'm going to actually set the tone. I'm going to give uh, him the opportunity to kind of give his backstory, but really our location at Mission Vejo always had incredible culture, incredible relationships, but it wasn't until 2019 with this incredible coach who I'm just looking at right now came in and obviously built a lot of relationships with our locations, but more than uh, more importantly, really started to focus on the operations of our location. He's our client coordinator and uh, he's made a world of change in our uh, boot camp location. So John, welcome to the show and give us a little backstory, my friend. Yeah, thank you so much. So it's going to be really hard to follow um, that that tall tale <laughs> over there. Uh, but yeah, so my name's John. I joined Fitbody Bootcamp in 2019. Uh, prior to working in Fitbody, I had no idea what the brand was, never even heard of it, never been into like a group fitness setting at all. Um, primarily, my experience is a little bit opposite of Jake's. So um, I grew up from, or I went to school in San Francisco State, got my degree in kinesiology. So shortly after like high school, I knew for sure I wanted to be in the fitness industry. I just didn't know what that looked like. So at the time, one-on-one -on -one personal training was kind of the path for me that was just clear and outlined the way I had to go. Uh, so after studying, getting my degree, um, I started working at one of the uh, premier kind of strength and conditioning facilities in San Francisco. Uh, I was there for about six or seven years, and then I moved home uh, back to San Clemente and now living in Dana Point. Uh, I was looking for kind of a break from fitness. I just been into it for a long time and was kind of getting over like teaching everybody how to squat and like how to do the same thing every day and having the same conversation. So I needed a change of pace. I went into five star hospitality and discovered a passion that I didn't know I had, which was just kind of taking care of people at a really, really high level. Yeah. And also learning these like high end organizational skills and just how to how to manage workflow in a day to day basis. So by the time I found Fitbody, it was like the perfect blend of like, man, I got fitness on one side, the the ad on Indeed says, hey, admin. So that means I got to sit behind the computer and stay in my little bubble and still help people. So I was like, I got to give this a shot. Um, I applied, went through about five interviews and three and a half years later, I'm still here. So uh, something along the lines went right. So thank you. Heck yeah, yeah. it's been an awesome ride. <laughs> now I'm curious uh, yeah. actually, before we dive into a little bit more about the onset experience, you said something really profound, very different than Jake, who didn't have the formal um, fitness experience, although you were athletic growing up, you had that experience mm -hmm. or at least interest. Um, so if you could unpack what really made you interested in fitness and I think that's important for our audience especially when they're gonna be hiring awesome people like you to really be able to speak to them and really what was important to you yeah for sure so I guess it really started um, after high school um, I got into like a personal growth mindset or I first found out about personal growth um, actually through a friend who I was playing baseball with he introduced me to the secret which just seems like it came out so long ago yeah and I was like all right I'm gonna go down this rabbit hole of personal growth and I realized man I want to know everything I can about like my mind about my body about like my soul, my spirit. So it went to this like uh, physical level, emotional level, like psycho spiritual level. And from there I was like, man, if I can at least get my degree in kinesiology and just learn all the fundamentals of the movement patterns, that seems like the most organized and compact way to go. So I guess my brain subconsciously at the time always wanted to know the details and yeah. always wanted to know the specific ways to do things. Uh, Cause that seemed like the clearest path forward without getting too lost in, in all my options that I had. So one more kind of big takeaway that I want to hit, especially not only from John's story, now for Jake's story. Um, you know, he talked about a frozen yogurt shop and he's a general manager. Never in a million years was I going to a frozen shop, uh, frozen yogurt shop looking for the potential head coach and now, you know, lead trainer for on-site experience. But what I realized, and he told, uh, Jake's told the story from his perspective, but from my perspective, I looked at it from like a customer service perspective. I remember going back to my wife, Tatiana, for like six months and I'm a preacher of habit. Guys like to give me a hard time. Um, and, uh, but it's, but it's true and it's actually worked out really well for me. So when I connect with Jake, I would walk home and be like to my wife, man, this is like the nicest guy, remembers my name, really on point, remembers
remembers my order. And from that customer service perspective, like I was really, really attracted. And then, you know, to Jake's point, when we saw each other at a big box gym, like the lights went on because I saw Jake from this customer experience role, which is so valuable because first and foremost, we're in the people business here at Fit Body Bootcamp, even more than the fitness uh, business. And then when I saw the fitness, the stars align. So I guess my message today is you always need to be recruiting. You always need to be looking for great people that really can connect with people, have a really customer service focus. Even if you don't think or thinking they're formally like a fitness person, you can train the skill, uh, which is really the big call to action. So that all said, um, now before we g- again dive into OSC, I want to give a little high level. You talked about your role being a head coach and then your job being a client coordinator. Can you break that down just high level? What's your What does that mean? What's your day-to-day responsibility? And then curious, since you both, both both win the organization for years now, how has your role evolved? Definitely, yeah. So obviously my role has changed dr- um, drastically since the beginning back in 2016. Um, we didn't even have really the head coach wasn't wasn't even a role back then, um, has really um, come to the forefront. And it's just a matter of accountability. Um, so now each person on the team has their own accountability. So we use our EOS accountability chart, which obviously you know very, very well. Um, and there's certain things that we're accountable for. So it, as the head coach, uh, my accountability uh, puts me in the bucket of I'm the sales, the sales lead. Um, so membership sales and trial sales, those are kind of the things that I oversee and the team knows that if they if there's a problem or something going on with the sales, they can come to me that I'm accountable for that. Also in terms of coaching, I'm, I'm the head coach, obviously. Um, so I have a bunch of coaches underneath me. So about four or five coaches that are underneath me directly, including coach John. Uh, he knows that he can come to me directly, whereas, uh, which he'll allude to in just a second that I can come to him when it comes to admin stuff. Um, so it's basically just the accountability has really shifted and really knowing who's accountable for what on our team has really been what uh, makes all the difference in the world. But to sum it all up, like what I do on a day to day basis is I'm in charge of everything that goes out on the floor. So everything that is client facing is really um, what I'm in charge of. I run our social media. Um, I program the workouts. I make sure that the workouts are set up correctly and that no one's getting injured and things like that. So really anything that's happening on the floor is my day to day. Um, and those are the kind of things that I, I worry about with with obviously some back end responsibility. Um, but in the first and foremost, it's really just what's going on on the floor with our clients. Yeah, appreciate the buddy. What about you, John, man? What is Can you explain really what a client coordinator is? Like what's your role and how has it evolved in the last few years? Yeah, for sure. So I guess the best way I think about it, or at least the way I always describe it is um, HQ uh, alluding to the EOS chart is like the visionary. So there's always something new coming down from HQ. Um, and then it kind of goes into our int- integrator, who's a gentleman named Blake. Um, each location will have an integrator. Um, so as that information comes down, it comes down to the client coordinator. And it's up to the client coordinator to deliver that information to the team, uh, whether it's like a new initiative um, for, like, say, a 28 days or a two-week trial or whatever um, new initiative that HQ wants to run and implement at your location level. Um, the client coordinator is kind of responsible for bringing that information down to the team um, and making sure that's executed uh, boots on the ground. Uh, so that's kind of the high level there. And then kind of behind the scenes, it's a lot of like just one by one, like client care. So like following up, whether it's a text message or an email or just making sure their account is all set up uh, and also just having eyes and ears and pretty much a hand and a foot and pretty much everything. So I want to know what's going on on the floor. I'm always watching. I'm always listening. Um, I'm always looking to see what clients are kind of communicating inbound to us, whether it's through um, like our client communication software, FitPro Tracker. Um, I'm always listening. I'm always looking. I want to know what's going on and kind of have my finger on the pulse. And then, of course, there is kind of coaching wrapped in there as well. So uh, when my brain gets overloaded behind the computer and keeping all the client's accounts in order, neat and tidy, um, I get to go release all that energy on the floor and go be goofy and go coach and rock out. Uh, to some of my favorite music. So it's a little bit of everything. And that you do. Um, Appreciate that. Uh, Next question, um, but again, before we dive into uh, the nuts and bolts of OSC, which really my first question is, can you break it down? What does the days look like? Before I do, and transition there, and I'll look at you, John, first. Um, And this is a really great, I guess, question for you uh, watching this, who's interested in opening a gym, hopefully opening a fit body as well, on really what speaks to your people, like why they're going to stay with you, because your team is your product. And we always say, if you want to retain your clients, okay, you need to be able to retain your team. Uh, So John, from your lens, what's your biggest source of fulfillment, would you say, over the last few years? Like, why do you still continue your career with FitBody? And then I'll, Jake, ask the same question for you. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think I have to flip it back to your own words that you said. It's a personal growth kind of uh, not hot chamber. Uh, what was the word you use for it? Pressure Ooh. cooker. Yeah. Pressure it cooker. was pretty, yeah. Personal growth, pressure cooker. Uh, so for me in a way, I might not always say it, but I'm always up for a challenge. Uh, so being 
like on the mats in front of so many people and having such responsibility for so many clients and so many lives, um, it's a great challenge and there's always something to strive for and get better at. Uh, so I kind of like that aspect of it where like, I'm always challenged to get out of myself and remind myself that it's not about me and never was, it never will be. It's about the person in front of me in the moment, whether that's on the mats or someone on the, like, standing next to me on the the front desk, trying to update their credit card. Um, it's never transactional. It's always just about the person and always delivering that experience and just reminding them that the person in front of you means more um, than you do in the moment. And they got to feel that and they got to know that and they'll keep coming back. Heck yeah. And I say this, which you just basically in your words, you said it's never transactional. And I always like to teach our team there's money in the transaction, but there is wealth in the relationship. We're in the relationship business. So the fact that you say it's not transactional, that's really like for me when I hear that, that is a reason for your success and our success. So appreciate that, John. Absolutely. How about you, buddy? So um, what I got to say is that I personally, I hate being in a rut. So in all my previous jobs, I've only had two other previous jobs before I started working at Fitbody. I worked in a restaurant and then at a frozen yogurt place. And both of those, I worked for three years and three years. And in those three years, it was always, you know, it's the same exact food. It's the same exact cadence. It's the same exact times. It's the same exact people. It's the same, 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 same. Whereas, oh my gosh, my seven years at Fitbody, if you go back seven years from my first day of coaching till now, it's the world has completely changed. And has it changed dramatically? Like, have we gone from doing three hour workouts to 30 minute workouts? No, we've always done 30 minute circuit training workouts. We've always done the bread and butter. That's always just like our secret sauce is our 30 minute workouts. But has our programming gotten better? way better. We have professionals that are looking into our programming that are helping us program, that are helping us program better and better and better and safer and more effective workouts. Has our facility gotten better? Like, heck yes, our, our uh, new 4.0 look looks so much better than the old look. And not to say that it was too terrible, but it's always good to be changing up and always, you know, it's a fresh environment. It's always nice to have something new. For instance, we're redoing our bathroom and it seems so simple at, at facility right now, but hey, that remodel is going to make a big difference. It's going to look sleek. It's going to look nice. It's going to look new. And everything is constantly changing for the better and getting better. Um, and that's a testament to you. And you kind of lead the charge here. Bryce. Uh, so I always owe it to you um, for always keeping us on the forefront of what's to come and what's to come and really having that vision. That's something that I'm not very good at. I'm not good at seeing the long term. I'm good at seeing where we need to be in the next year and following the directions that are put forth. Whereas I know you are looking 10, 15, 20 years in the future and you have a great vision and we just follow that vision along and it just continues to get better and better and better. Whereas any other company that I've ever worked for, any other company that any of my friends have worked for, it's just you know, you come in and you do the same exact thing as you did yesterday. Whereas at Fitbody, every day is every day is a new day, and it's always fresh. It's always exciting, and it's just super fun. And that's you know what's kept me around for seven years, and hopefully seven more years to come. You know, so heck yeah, man. Well, I appreciate you guys, man. It's been an awesome ride, and uh, we're just getting started in many ways. So appreciate that overview. Now I want to dive into OSC really to kind of unpack that. And uh, I first want to start like the structure. So if never uh, someone's watching this is like, okay, onsite experience. That sounds great. Like the fact that we're going to get the classroom style learning on our Fitbody. Academy, which is really a learning management software system. So you get all the classroom learning prior to coming to onsite experience. And we get one of two options. You can come to Southern California, or if you're in the Midwest or East Coast, you can go to Berkeley, Michigan. And we have a structured approach. But really, um, the, the OSC starts on a Sunday. We have a welcome dinner to kind of break bread, really build the relationships because we are in the relationship business. So it only makes sense we do that for our franchise partners and new coaches coming in. And then we take basically Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of training, and then we do a debrief on Thursday. So kind of starting with day one, uh, what does that look like? And I believe, John, that's more of the admin basis. So is that right? That's correct. Yeah. So on day one, um, usually they'll kind of observe the first two morning sessions um, just to kind of get their general sense of like the flow uh, for the 5.15, 6.15 a.m. or whatever time your sessions are. Uh, we have a mid-morning break for about an hour and we cover new client onboarding. So pretty much all the scenarios and everything you need to kind of deliver the magic on day one when a client's showing up and walking through your doors. Um, I always phrase it that clients are coming in from all sorts of ways, like there's a bunch of inbound traffic, whether that's um, opting in through Instagram or Facebook or like an email campaign, like people are coming to us from all over the place. And then just all the steps it takes from Mrs. Jones or Mr. Jones to kind of get from, you know, giving us their information to showing up and actually in your facility on day one, um, how to deliver a good first time, uh, first time, I guess, experience or a good first impression um, and all the things that you need to have or kind of look out for um, in their, their account, like in their FitPro tracker account and just making sure behind the scenes um, they're all set up. So that's kind of the, the morning period. Um, after that, we observe the, the second two sessions. Uh, we take a little lunch break from about 10 to 1130. And then in the afternoon from about uh, 12 to 2, we cover uh, just the basics of FitPro Tracker. It's a very uh, kind of large brush stroke over the top. So we go through the importance of contact groups, 
uh, being able to keep those contact groups organized just so everybody's in the right bucket on their client journey from you know a lead to a trial to or say a I guess a lead, a prospect, a trial, a member, uh, what happens if you have to put them in past and, and archive and, and all those things. Uh, we also go through uh, just general kind of fundamentals of the programs and the processes that are inherent within Fit Pro Tracker and just uh, kind of teeing up that, hey, you'll get a lot of this hands-on training in Fit Pro Tracker like down the road. It's just a light overview of this is the software you'll be using. Copy that. And that takes place through like the morning and early afternoon day one. Yeah, I would say a Fit Pro Tracker training uh, or overview goes from about 12 to 2 or 2.30. And that's when they finish up day one. It's basically, they, they're at the facility, to your point, early morning sessions start starting at five and they're bare, there through two, basically on a daily basis. Correct, yeah. So that's kind of all day one. Um, observe a few sessions, new client onboarding, observe a few more sessions, lunch break, and then Fit Pro Tracker, and then wrap for the day. Copy that. And also too, for our audience as well, is we do have two on-site experiences and there's a, a slight adjustment with scheduling. So we're giving you the general framework. Some of the details might you know change depending on location. We only have two sites to do this. Um, and that way we can keep the, the experience as consistent as possible. So appreciate that, John. Uh, what about day two? And I want to say that's like strategy session day, yeah? Day two is coaching day. So um, um, that's pretty much when we just go over the overview of um, kind of what makes a good coach, um, some of the best practices for on the mic and uh, on the floor. So whether you're the floor coach or the on the mic coach. Uh, so we go through best practices there. We also go over hiring and firing coaches, um, which is usually the, the part that we spend the most time on because anybody that's coming in and opening a business, really all they want to know is, you know, how do I hire? How do I hire the right people? Who do I look for to hire? Um, what happens if so such and such happens? Like, how do I handle firing that person and stuff? And me and John have seen pretty much at all over our years if it body obviously we've 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 had to hire and we've definitely had to fire as well as as sad as that always is and that's always the hardest part especially as like anybody in a management position um, but yeah so we go through that um, and it's the same schedule same flow so um, they watch the first two sessions um, then we go over just kind of um, basic like facility guidelines and coaching. Um, then they uh, watch two more sessions and then we just kind of really dive deep into coaching. We go over programming. Um, we talk a lot about, like I said, hiring and firing and just kind of overall, like what makes what makes a great coach and what makes a great team is really uh, day two. Uh, and then to your point, day three is our strategy session day. So that's really our day that we go deep into a lot of role playing. Uh, and, so And to break it up, just because sometimes I kind of get ahead of myself, I have the curse of knowledge. What is a strategy session? Yeah, just totally. Yeah, that's what I'm getting to. So a, a strategy session is really in essence, it's a glorified sales meeting is what it is. If you said it was a sales meeting, if you're setting up a meeting with a client and you say, hey, you know, Mrs. Jones, we got to set you up for your sales meeting on Tuesday. Mrs. Jones isn't going to want to come to that sales meeting because she knows See you later, buddy. Yeah, all this guy wants is my money. I'm going to get out of here. But hey, Mrs. Jones, we got to set you up for your strategy session. It's a 45 minute goal setting meeting where you get to sit down with myself or Coach John. We'll take an in body scan. We'll talk to you about your goals. We'll talk to you a little bit of kind of where you're at um, with nutrition. We'll briefly touch on that. Um, and then we'll just talk about your membership options at the end, Mrs. Jones. Does that sound good? Mrs. Jones is going to say, yeah, like I'll take a free 45 minute meeting where I'll get an in body scan. I'll get to talk briefly about nutrition. Like, oh my gosh, that's so much value that I'm getting from this. Um, so we really coach our new franchise partners on how to give those meetings um, the right way. Because again, you don't want to come off as this sleazy, scummy sales guy, um, which I'm sure everybody out there knows that guy at the gym that's just out there to make membership sales. And that's not really what this is really framed towards, especially not client facing. Obviously, we know, hey, I want to make that sale. I want to sell a membership at the end of the strategy session. But I'm not going to tell Mrs. Jones, I'm really just doing this so I could get your money. So uh, that's pretty much that what we go through that pretty much entire third day is really just strategy session. So we go over a script, um, which they've watched the training videos ahead of time. So that academy that they do ahead of time, all that classroom kind of style learning, they actually get to see a super awesome video with this guy right here. Hey, <laughs> of course, that he uh, that he filmed um, and it just kind of just is a, a practice run. And we just set them up with other people that are um, in the group as well. And they just do practice runs pretty much for hours. And it's a little awkward at first. It's always awkward role playing saying like, hey, you know what? You have to act like you're Mrs. Jones. You're not the franchise partner that you are. You're not the in shape gym guy that you are. You're Mrs. Jones. Like you're probably 30, 40 years old. You're probably a little out of shape. Uh, you probably have three kids, you know, something like that. And you got to uh, assume that persona. And then that coach is going to try to give you the best strategy session that they can and eventually sell you to membership. And then really the last hour of day three is really just going over 
on the spot sales. Um, so obviously not everybody's gonna sign up for a strategy session. Not everyone's gonna commit that 45 minutes to come sit down with you. So you still need to be able to sell those people on membership, uh, whether it's as they're running out because the session just ended and it's like, hey, Mrs. Jones, I gotta catch you right here. Like we need to sign you up. Uh, your 28 day trial ends next Monday. So uh, we want you to continue working out with us. So we gotta get you signed up for membership. And then you gotta go through the process of what that looks like, making sure that you go over the agreement in great detail. So that way, if you have a cancellation policy and you don't mention it when you talk to Mrs. Jones, Two weeks from then, Mrs. Jones is going to say, hey, I'd like to cancel my membership. And you're like, well, you can't. There's a four-week notice of cancellation, and you have to make it past 12 weeks. And she might say, like, oh, well, you never covered that with me. Mm -hmm. So we really talk about the importance of, like, hey, you really got to go step by step and make sure that you mention all this stuff and keep it as consistent as possible. Because once you have a consistent spiel down, like, you know, in the back of your head, it just gives you the confidence that, hey, in six months, if Mrs. Jones comes to you and says, hey, I want to cancel my, my 12 month membership or whatever it is. Like, hey, Mrs. Jones, we talked about this. Remember, you signed on for 12 months. You paid in full already. Mm -hmm. um, so there's no refund. So we can't cancel your membership at this time. And you have the confidence. No, I definitely said that because I always have the same exact spiel over and over again. So. Um, yeah. That's pretty much just to sum up day three is really just sales day and just strategy session overview day. So tons of information, tons of insight, and they're walking, I'm sure probably like a little bit um, overwhelmed because there's so much learning, but I'm curious, you know, going back to the coaching day, um, not only do they learn coaching, but they also work out and they, we also get them on the mat and the mic. Do we not? Correct. What yes. does that look like? Yeah. So totally. That is something I, I glazed over, but um, we do like to put the franchise partners that are the most comfortable with it. Obviously, if they're super uncomfortable and they're not ready to go, it still is a live session. So we invite our franchise partners to take part in our live session. So our 815 or our 915 session, we get them on the microphone and they start talking to our clients, um, which obviously they are our paying clients. Yeah. We have a lot of clients and I would like to keep it that way. <laughs> uh, so that being said, um, if if a franchise partner just isn't isn't up to it or just not getting it right, that's OK. Like we can take them off the mic and we, we firmly set that expectation beforehand. But we want to kind of just like almost like you got to throw them to the sharks. Uh, it's the same thing in fitness. Like sometimes the best way to learn is by doing doing. Um, and we want to get them comfortable, get some real world experience. We also have them be the floor coach, um, which is the coach that demonstrates exercises before the workout starts. I mean, goes around and helps people with form. So they're also performing that as well. Um, so really, I mean, by the second day that they're in our fit body boot camp, they're on the mats, they're coaching, they're on the microphone um, and just really getting into the swing of things. And then that third day, day three, the strategy session day during the sessions is just another opportunity for them to practice. So there should be two full days of them practicing, either being on the floor coach or uh, the mic coach. Copy that. Uh, um, questions. I'm sure you get a ton of questions. John, I'm going to look at you. Like, you know, for someone who, who hasn't uh, experienced this, uh, what sort of questions do you get? And uh, also, too, the other flip side, what are some unique kind of observations that you've made maybe that you didn't see? And I'll use an example. One, one time, one of our franchise partners was like, one of the biggest value points that I received from the training, not only was like the structure, how to run sessions, the strategy sessions, you know, um, you know, John's work from, you know, Fitboard Tracker and the client coordinator perspective, but it was actually just meeting the clients and getting know why they you know join fit body boot camp and not some uh, some other location so i thought that was really eye-opening so for you john from your lens what sort of questions you get and maybe what was like a big aha that you know you were you kind of came to from you know working with some of our new franchise partners yeah so i'll say this first one a little tongue-in-cheek but a lot of people say can i get a copy of that and whether that's like a template we're using or like a something we have on the counter, like the first time sign-in sheet or the strategy session sign-up sheet, um, it's really just a reflection um, of like all the processes we have in place that we do really well at our location. Um, and they're really just trying to learn how to replicate that. So they're asking, what are you doing? Like, what's that for? Like, can I get a copy of that? And it seems like really basic questions, but it's just kind of explained to them. They're like, Oh, this is the first time signing sheet. This is why you need to have it at your front desk. Like you need to have that option available for someone to sign up or sign in or take part in all the offerings that you have. Um, but when it comes to, I guess you'd say more like on the back end training, um, they really kind of want to know about like just the general flow. It's like uh, on Monday is when they come in. That's also my admin day. Mm -hmm. um, so depending on which location you're at, depending how many coaches and what your staff looks like, it's nice to have your client coordinator to have like a full admin day where they can really focus on account and client cleanup as well as follow up. Uh, so they're actually kind of wondering like, hey, what are you doing behind the computer? Uh, we actually had some feedback like, oh, the guy was sitting behind the computer for the first like two sessions. And I say that because as, as Jake mentioned, it's like, hey, we're still running a business. Like there's still things I need to do like on that day. Yeah. So maybe it's just, hey, looking at my emails, like making sure I'm not missing anything important um, so I can, again, focus all my attention on the OSE group. Um, but some things you just have to cover first. So uh, they just want to know about my general flow. Like, how do you do admin Mondays? Like, what does that look like? Um, can I get a copy of that? What are you doing? How are you doing it? 
Um, so those are the questions I kind of get. Mm-hmm. Um, it's more admin focused and Jake gets all the fun questions. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, before we flip it to Jake about some fun questions, uh, what's <laughs> probably in kind of the second part of the question, what's yeah. the biggest unexpected value mm-hmm. that our franchise partners receive from the training? And you don't, really, you don't know that unless they communicate that, but mm-hmm. maybe what's one or two things you've heard over the last, you know, X amount of time running these programs? Yeah, I think a lot of people are just kind of grateful for the experience, like just to come and see another location because um, it's really kind of, as you talked about, like getting game film, it's like you might be running an awesome location already because uh, sometimes there's franchise partners that come out and they're, they've are they already opened or maybe they're um, close to opening and sometimes they're all across the timeline. Uh, but I think just to kind of see somebody else's operations and see like the same way of doing something you do every day on a daily basis. Uh, I'm a big sports fan. So there's like, if you think about all the hitters getting ready for, for batting practice, right? Mm -hmm. They're all around taking a pregame batting practice. And it's like, even the best hitter can learn from the guy that's up there for his first year. It's like, Oh, you're doing this. Like I've been swinging this bat for 20 years, but I never thought to do it that way. I never thought to put my hands up or my hands down, whatever it is. So they're seeing the same things, the same operations they're doing, but just through a different lens. And sometimes that can just kind of get you out of yourself and allow the room for new ideas to come in. Uh, so I think that'd probably be the biggest value bomb is just kind of getting outside of your location and seeing how the same thing is run uh, successfully somewhere else. Love that. Uh, Jake, I'm going to flip it over to you, but to lean into, and you're going to be impressed actually, both of you, because I'm not a big TV guy. I really am focused a lot of the times, but I just watched the movie Moneyball and I was inspired. My favorite movie of all time. I was just really? going to say that. Yeah. It's his favorite movie. So Stephen Hadley gave a presentation and it was really about like a business perspective, like st- static uh, statistics and like looking at numbers and valuing data. So I watched the movie and there's an opening quote from Mickey Mantle that says, um, Oh, I'm going to butcher this, but I'm surprised for, for a game that I've lived all my, or watched all my life. I'm surprised how little I actually know. Yeah. And really kind of what you said is like, you know, for someone doing this over and over again, there's always something to be learned. There's always something deeper that you can like lock into. And that's for me. That's for you. That's for everyone. That's for you watching this as well. Um, so that's a really, you know, important, uh, piece of feedback that I got from you. Yeah. And can I interject one Please. thing? Just, um, as, as they go on and they get to learn about the disc profile, I feel like a lot of our owners are Eagles. So they're very execution like focused Mm -hmm. and sometimes they might not always like step back and kind of see, see things through someone else's lens. Uh, so I feel like it could be easy to kind of to miss things, especially if you're so dialed in to like your operations and for, for all the, all the good, right. You're dialed in, you want to be successful. You want to know the numbers you want to execute. You want to do all these things, but you're so laser focused. You might not see what's on the periphery, even if you are a big visionary, you know, cause you have like your big vision going forward, uh, but having different perspectives. So from an owl or like a parrot and a dove, if you have them, um, it's just going to add that much more value to you. Totally, man. And you know, you, you've paid me great compliments over the years about learning from me, but I feel like the feelings are mutual, man. I learned so much from both you guys and your style. So there's, there's a lot to be said. Um, if you're watching this and you're not familiar with the eagle, the owl, the bird profiling, which is disc and take flight learning, uh, link to episode 92. Uh, we re- reference this a lot here at Fit Body Bootcamp. Game changer will be able to provide that context. Um, Jake, going to flip it to you. What kind of questions, what kind of fun questions do you yeah, get? That well, I mean, obviously out? we get like the, the fun, wacky ones, like, you know, like, hey, you know, what do you, what do, you do if a client smacks you on the butt while you're coaching? Uh, and guess what? I have an answer because it's happened before and it <laughs> happens all the time. And I tell Thank every you. new coach that it's probably going to happen to you. Uh, you know, obviously, like address the situation with the client and tell them that it's you know not appropriate. <laughs> but you just you just never know when it's gonna happen. Obviously, a little different uh, with like myself being a male. But obviously, oh, yeah. if someone's doing that to one of our female coaches, that is a huge no go and a big red flag. Uh, but that's just one of some of the, like the the funkier questions. But one of the um, the most uh, asked questions that I get, you know, is because everybody sees how well me and John work together. And obviously we've been working together for three and a half years now, and I've been with a company for seven. Um, so we, we work in tandem pretty darn well. Um, like I always say, like we can talk telepathically, like I don't need to ask coach John about some stuff because I already know what he's, I already know what he's going to do next. Um, so as we're coaching on the floor, it just seems so seamless. I mean, but that didn't happen overnight. Like the first couple of, obviously the first couple of months, the first year or so probably was a, l- a little, a little shaky, uh, took us a while to get going with each other. Um, but the, the biggest question I get asked is, you know, like, Hey, how do I hire a Jake and a John? I want a Jake and a John for my facility. And what I always have to remind everybody is like, hey, we're an established facility that's been operating for, we just had our nine year anniversary. So we're nine years into this. You're on day negative 50 still, because you haven't even opened yet. <laughs> negative 50. You know, you're, still, you're still not even opened yet. So the odds of you getting a Jake and a John right off the bat are pretty slim. That being said, like, is there ways to minimize all the suckage that coaches bring? 
yeah, there totally is. And that's kind of what we go over in that second day in the coaching day when we talk about like who to hire and what to look for in a new coach. The mock interview process. Yeah, and the and mock interview that. process and our entire our interview process is lengthy. Like for a gym, not many gyms require five interviews to go through. So we have a Zoom interview, then you gotta come in for a workout. And if we like you for the workout, you come in for a mock session. If we like you for the mock session, we have another interview with you. If you really, really like you after that, then we have a final interview with you. So five total interviews to get a job at a gym. That seems a little extreme, but it's extreme for a purpose is because we want the best coaches in the brand. We want the best people for the job and not everybody is going to be in the right seat on this bus. So we have a bus and we're going down the highway oh, yeah. and not everybody is in the right seat. They might be a great personal trainer. They might be super awesome. They might have all the technical knowledge in the world, but they not might not be the best at conveying it. They may not be the best coach. They may, they may not be the best in a group and heck, they may not be in the best in a group of Mrs. Joneses. They might be a best in a group of like the 20 something year olds or the 16 year olds you know, the younger kids, that's not our clientele. Our clientele is Mrs. Jones. She's 30, 30 to 50 years old. She's a mom. She has kids like you need to know how to coach to that. Um, and so, the yeah, like I said, the biggest question I get is, you know, how can I find a Jake or a John? And I try to give them uh, the best that I can um, in, in terms of how to find us. And like you said, like a lot of times it's about hiring the person. Like I know that you hired me not off of my technical knowledge. You hired me off of my customer service um, and it's taken me far. And obviously I've learned the technical knowledge on the back end. And even to John, it was even though he has that kinesiology major, um, he that he's not just all exercise knowledge. Yeah, yeah. He's an old soul that we all love and he's down to earth and he definitely keeps me grounded as well. Cause obviously, you know, like if totally. I was left in my, on my own, <laughs> I'd fly off the rails and go crazy. So luckily John keeps me on track totally. and keeps me on the right bus in the right seat or else I'd be jumping all over to every single seat all over I'll, the place. I'll also just add that I, I found fit body by accident technically. Ooh. Like, I mean, I was just looking on indeed. So like, yeah. And it's always just keeping your I options, yeah, keeping your options open as well. So like never saying no to someone coming in and being a prospect coach. I'll take like one of our coaches, coach Kellen, for example, like she was a client recommendation way back in November. Um, when we were looking for a coach, we decided to go a different way. So we didn't go with her, even though we all thought, Hey, you know, she's an awesome, like, it's a great idea. Like let's keep it on the back burner. Um, and then just a couple of months ago, Hey, guess what? We needed a new coach. She was the first one that came to mind. We reached out and she said, yes, she left her other job, came to coach for us, signed on as a part-time intern and now is a full-time coach already after like the six week mark because yeah. um, she's such a rock star and we hired her for her personality and her and her uh, sociability. We didn't hire her necessarily for her technical knowledge, even though she has that on the back end as well. Um, so that's really the biggest question that I get asked is, you know, like, how do I hire a Jake and John? And the, the short answer is, it's going to be really hard at the beginning, but don't worry. Your Jake and John will come eventually, but just know that you need to, you need to set and establish your facility first, and then you can find your rock stars right after that. Mic drop, buddy. That's awesome. So true. Hey there, my name is Bryce Henson, CEO of Fit Body Bootcamp, and you might know me as the host of this podcast, but what you might not know is that I started my fitness business journey as a Fit Body location owner. And since 2012, I've been able to impact my community while creating financial freedom, both for myself and my family too. You see, by using Fit Body's proven business model, we give you all the support and guidance you need to be your own boss and build a business that aligns with your passion for fitness. And being we are the absolute best at launching and scaling our franchise franchise partners gyms, we are now excited to announce our 100 member guarantee. Now you might be thinking, Bryce, what is that? Well, we are so confident that we'll launch your Fit Body Bootcamp location with well over 100 paying members from day one on your grand opening that if we don't, We'll run your marketing till we do. That's how confident we are in our ability to support you and guide you through this process. So if you're interested in creating more income through impact, click the link somewhere around this video to apply. All right, last question around OSC before we bring this home for the bonus round, but uh, it's about evolution and about feedback and how the you know evolution has happened. And actually, at the time of this recording, I think, well, I've already dropped the 20th episode or 20th um, on-site experience. We just finished 19, but this episode releases in May. Um, this all in mind, how has the program evolved? And even you know, if, you're, if you uh, caught on to this, I had the vision for this, but I'm a huge believer, like, well, I have to vis the vision, I need to lay down the foundation, then I need to recruit smarter people people, better people than me to optimize it. Um, and you know, I was even asking like day one, day two, it's just cause I've been a little bit out of the mix, but high level seeing the program can evolve. Um, how has the program evolved when we first started and really how is that feedback kind of session? Because really kind of providing, uh, visibility to our audience is we on Thursday, when we do a debriefing day, they come to HQ, they basically give us feedback on what worked went well, what didn't work well, or at least, you know, suggestions to make it better. And then we evolve. So, you know, class 19 is considered 
considerably better than class one we just first started. So from your perspective, you know, how has it evolved? And I'll flip it over to John. So, I mean, just the, one of the biggest ways that it evolved is when we first started, it was just kind of an idea. It was an owner, I think, that just reached out and said, like, hey, can I, one of my coaches come and just shadow your coaches? Um, and it was a great idea. And they came in, they shadowed us, and it was an awesome. I think they were only there for a day or two. It wasn't the full four-day experience that it is now. Um, but just over to, like, we did that the first time. And then finally, once we once we did it a couple of times and we had some people in to just train with us, basically just shadowing us. It wasn't really the structured event that it is now. Yeah. Um, and then you had the idea to structure it. Um, when we structured it, I mean, we didn't really even know what to expect. Like, I wasn't even really sure what to be teaching these people. You know, I just gave them like, hey, you know, this is what I do on a day to day basis. We our schedule was different. We had them come in in the mornings and we stayed till about some from 5 a.m. to noon. And then they came back and we did three o'clock to almost eight o'clock in the evening. It was this crazy long day. I remember every single day coming home, like looking at my watch and was like, holy smokes, I burned like 4000 calories today because <laughs> I was just on and I couldn't speak. And that's only on Monday night. And I was like, oh, my God, I got two more days of this. <laughs> holy smokes. Like, how am I going to make it through all the way to Wednesday? You know, kind of thing. Um, and then over time, like we adjusted the schedule. And like you said, every single group has been so so awesome because they've all given real feedback so the problem is that, like the, the problem a lot of times is when you ask somebody for feedback they just say like oh you know it was pretty good i liked it and it's like that's not feedback right. i want hey you know what went well what did you like what things did you get out of it and hey what what could we have done better like what would you like to see more of and because of all the groups so all 20 or all 19 groups have really given us solid feedback and it's even still like our, our, it's still not perfect but guess what uh, class 19 is going to be different than class 20 because class 20 we're going to be able to get better because of what class 19 said um so that's really the biggest evolution is we changed the timing. Um, we changed the program. Now it's a very structured approach. Me and John both have like full full length presentations. Um, it's not just us rambling because that's kind of how it was at the beginning was like, hey, can you just talk to us a little bit about coaching? And like, you know me, like once you give me a stage and a platform, I'll talk, Let's for, go, hours. Baby. I'll I'll talk for hours and hours. <laughs> um, so obviously like I went off tangent on tangents and all sorts of stuff. And that was probably the reason why I was losing my voice every day. Um, <laughs> but now that it's it's way more structured, it, it makes it open for more questions. I really feel like the um, OSC uh, participants are getting a lot more out of it as well. Copy that. John, from your lens, buddy. Yeah, so I'll just add a little bit. Um, he kind of already touched on like the days were longer, so uh, we definitely kind of like trimmed the fat of the program. It's like we kind of started with a big idea of, of what we we're going to do. Um, even on, yeah, kind of like our presentations, like my Fit Pro Tracker one was like so boring to start. Like <laughs> I remember people were like, they're just falling asleep, like talking to me. And I was like, hmm, maybe I'm going like too in depth about something that like doesn't really make sense to them at the moment. Uh, so we kind of realized like, hey, a lot of these people are like, they're not really going to be using like the software until like months down the road. So we kind of zoomed out and we're like, hey, we don't need to go too far in the trenches with this yet. Yeah, yeah. And not just FitPro Tracker, but with um, hiring and firing and um, certain things we're talking about with coaching and um Man, I can't remember what the other presentations were about, but it was really just kind of simplifying. So it's starting with more, and then each time we get that feedback, and we kind of just trim a little bit of fat, a little bit of fat until we get better at it. And you just kind of get this nice distilled, like, here's one nugget of information, here's one other nugget of information. Because if there's too much, and well, it's already three days of a lot of information, mm -hmm. but like, knowledge like isn't always power if you have too much knowledge you might forget a lot of it and then what was the point of coming out anyways so we try to distill it to like just really basic things done really well copy that well uh gentlemen this has been an awesome overview of osc i have a couple last questions to finish off anything else from your lens that's really important to share and no obligation but before we put a kind of bow on the osc section yeah so i would just say always uh well a lot of the feedback we get is like each person has a different learning style. So just know like uh, they're, again, the owls, the eagles, like the the parrots, everybody wants to learn something different. Like there's people that love coaching day and they hate the, like the admin day. And there's other people that like love the admin day and are kind of bored by the coaching day. So just know that like, whatever group you come into, you're gonna be coming with different minded people who learn differently. Um, so most of the learning is going to occur like on the path to launching. Mm -hmm. That's where you're going to get a lot of the hands-on experience. Uh, what we do at OSC is really just kind of like a high level overview and it's a experience. And that's kind of why we named it that way is like, Hey, you're getting the idea of what a really high functioning facility looks like and operates operates like on a day-to-day -day basis. But you're definitely not going to know everything about running your business after spending three days with me and Jake who aren't technically business owners. <laughs> so 100%, yeah, I totally, yeah. I totally agree with what John said. Yeah. Um, a lot of times, like there is that, especially at the beginning, um, when we started OSC, there was kind of that false expectation of like, hey, I'm gonna come out of this three-day training, and I'm gonna be an absolute expert in all fields that we're gonna cover. And 
I'm not even a fully expert yeah. in all these fields that we cover. So just like John said, like, you know, we are just giving them the overview. Um, but it just is so important for these people to come in and learn um, in, in the facility and really get into the trenches. Like you said, like, I can't I can't um, stress that enough, like how important that is, because really just like looking at videos online or coming in and doing a classroom day, like just isn't enough. Like you don't you don't really get a feel for how it is. You don't get a feel for how those long hours are. You don't get a feel for how that 515 hits you like a freaking ton of bricks, like every single morning doing it four day, four or five days a week. Um, so getting into the trenches, getting into the facility is just so important. And I, I think it's just invaluable, you know. Copy that, gentlemen. Well, my last two questions to finish out today is really a parting piece of wisdom. So this show is obviously to provide education, inspiration, motivation, guidance uh, to really so we can spread our mission of inspiring more fitness and changing more lives by really attracting more franchise partners to our mission. Um, so, you know, for audience there who's interested in opening their own gym, right, want to make a big impact, but for whatever reason, they're scared, they're nervous, they know this is what they want to do, but there's this little voice saying, oh, I don't know. Um, what would be your parting piece of recommendation? John, we'll go with you first. Yeah. So I would just say, trust the vision, trust the leader who's like laid down the path in front of you. Um, so, uh, piggybacking a little bit on what Jake alluded to earlier and kind of, I guess, bringing it back and kudos to you, um, is that like fit body and, and what you've brought to fit body, like has a strong vision and they're coming into the brand at the best time. Might've stole Jake's, uh, his Thunder. recommendation earlier, okay. but I know that was coming. Um, yeah, like the whole theme is like alignment and the vision is really strong right now. And there's a lot of resources and support for you here at HQ. Um, so at times you're going to feel lost. You're going to feel like you don't know what you're doing. Uh, but there's like the cap coaches, the coaching and profitability. There's myself and coach Jake. There's, there's you Bryce. Um, so there's a lot of support and there's a lot of people here. Uh, the two Chris's who they might meet and eventually, um, everybody's here to help them succeed. Um, as long as they kind of meet us halfway and they got to swim towards the ship and we will, uh, we will guide them as best as we can. And, um, yeah, they just got to follow the path. Appreciate that, bud. How about you, Jake? Yeah, so I'm going to piggyback on what he said. Obviously, he did take the thing that I was going to say exactly, is that getting into Fit Body right now is really, it's the best time. And I've been with the brand for a really long time. I've been with it since, um, obviously, 2016, so it's been it's been a minute. Um, but right now is the best time. You have the most support, and really, you just have the most cheerleaders. Like, something different about Fit Body that I've noticed and that I've never heard about any other gym franchise is that everybody's rooting for each other. It's not a matter of, like, I'm not sitting here in Mission Viejo saying, like, oh my gosh, I want to be so much better than CJ Camp. I want to make more money than he is, like, just to put him down. Down. If I see CJ making seven figures, I'm like, heck yeah, CJ, like keep it going. Like, I want to see you get up and up and up. I want to see you open up a third location. And I feel the same exact way for every single owner across the country and across the world. I want Fit Body to be a household name. And that is just part of like the, the drive that I have. And that's part of the reason why I love coaching OSE and why I love having new franchise partners come on. Is I'm so sick and tired of people coming, like uh, coming up to somebody and be like, hey, have you ever heard of Fit Body Bootcamp? But they say no. I want them to be like, yeah, oh my gosh, my sister, my brother, my uncle, everybody goes to Fit Body Bootcamp that I know. That is what I'm looking for. And that's really the kind of like the mood that everybody has and that I've noticed all the other owners that I've ever met, like whether it's at World Conference or at Elite Training or whatever it is, all of them have that same mentality that, hey, we just want the brand to get better. Like it's not necessarily all about me. It's about the brand getting better together and we want the ship to rise, not just one sailor. So that's something that like if you're sitting at home and you're thinking like, oh, I've been thinking about opening a Fit Body Bootcamp and you just aren't sure yet, like right now is the freaking time. Like you should get on the phone right now, call Tyler and he will hook you up because um, there's no there's no better time than right now to get started. Heck yeah, mic drop. Appreciate you, boys. All right, to finish this off, in the title of this, uh, our show, the name of the show is the Fitness CEO Podcast. And guys, while you not, might not be the CEO of Mission Viejo, you are certainly the CEO of your lives and have made some incredible moves to add so much value to our organization. So I want to kick it off, John, why don't you uh, start us off. What does it mean to be a CEO to you? Yeah, for sure. So I guess just going all the way back to nearly day one or week one of, of my training, um, all the way back in 2019, uh, we watched a video by a guy named Pedro Skoulian. It was called Entrepreneur. Yeah. Uh, so it's really just about taking a, a extreme responsibility for what you're doing every single day. Um, so for me showing up, uh, you know, at work every day, it's like, Hey, I got to show up on time. Like I'm looking for like the things on the carpet, like the, the leaf that blew in or this toilet paper that was stuck to someone's shoe. And like, if I'm in the middle of the session, I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to put it in my pocket and I don't care. Um, I'm going to go into every account and make sure it's all cleaned up and ready to go. I'm going to go above and beyond. And I was joking with coach Kellen the other day that we have waiver forever, but we also have patience forever. Uh, so it's really just kind of stepping back and having the patience and taking the responsibility every single day for every action you're doing. Um, and even just like your thoughts as well, it's like your mindset and your mood and how you're feeling coming into work. Um, and you're there not for yourself. It's like, yeah, you get a paycheck. That's cool. You got a job. Um, but really again, just going back to the clients, the community, 
you're a part of something that's so much bigger than you and it's been going on for so much longer than you've been here that you kind of feel this innate pull to get in and to help push it forward um, so long as it resonates for you. And if it doesn't, then we'll free up your future. But uh, to me, yeah, just take that responsibility, dive in, lean in, go into it 100%, um, own it like it's your own business, be the entrepreneur and treat it like it's yours and like it's your house and care for it like everyone in that room is your family. And I think if you can genuinely do that, people are going to follow you. Heck yeah. Appreciate you, John. Jake, definitely. Yourself, I mean, buddy. just to, yeah, just to piggyback kind of what on John said, really one of the most the things that I've most admired specifically about you and about anybody in a leadership role is being never being able to take ownership. Um, like a very famous quote from my man Bryce Sense is, "Hey, when shit hits the fan, if you start pointing fingers." That is not the person that anybody wants to follow. That person should be pointing the finger at themselves and saying, hey, you know, it was my bad, especially when times are bad and when times are good. That's not the person saying, hey, everything's good just because I willed it to be good. That's the person that's going to their team and thanking their team for making it good. Um, and that's just the true sign of a leader. And that's something, a uh, quality that you possess. And obviously you're in the role for a reason. Um, but yeah, someone that's just really willing to take ownership, especially when times get tough. Um, that's just something I've always admired in a CEO and just also someone that's always willing to grow and expand and have that vision. Like you do um, to really just set the stage and really set the tone. And because I mean, at the top of the list, like, hey, if you're the CEO, you're setting the standard. So you better live that standard. So if you have a standard, you better be way above that standard to make sure because if you set a standard and you're living below that standard, nobody's going to want to follow you. Nobody's want to get going to get behind you. And especially when times get tough, no one's going to follow you. They're all going to jump off the ship. So yeah. So anybody that's willing to take ownership and to grow their team. So well said, my friends. Mike drop. And uh, man, what an episode. So my friends, I hope you got a ton of value. The whole goal here is to show you the value of cha uh, training, the value your team is your product. These guys right here are the reason for our success. And really, they're able to lay the strong foundation for the rest of our brand. And this is the type of training, support, and mentorship and coaching you're going to get You know, when you become a Fit Body Bootcamp owner. So gentlemen, before we sign off, I just want from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you both. I want to acknowledge you, John. You've been a godsend in our facility. I say this and I mean this with every fiber. Um, I've learned so much from you, the patience, the execution, the calmness, the relationships, the steadiness, uh, excuse me, and of course, the strong operational support in addition to coaching has literally just blown up our gym and I'm so grateful for you. Jake, my dude, I love you like a brother. I've known you for such a long time. I view you as that. And uh, without you, Mission Vejo would not be where it's at today. Um, the brand would not be where it's at today. And I'm just so grateful that uh, I ended up getting a, picking an awesome frozen yogurt shop to build an awesome relationship. And you know what? I'm not a funny guy, but I wanted to, to finish on that note. But in all seriousness, man, I love you both. And I'm so grateful for you both. Thank you, sir. We Thank appreciate you so you. much. All right, friends. I know you got a ton of value. Assuming you did, give this video a like, subscribe, share this with someone who needs the mindset around, you know, kind of leveling up their training and that way we can level up their life. With all that said, we will see you, my friends, in the next episode.